Hello, and welcome to the Art of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane, and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop, and trust your intuition through interviews with other guests and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to the Art of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I'm your host for the podcast. And today we have a very special guest on and her name is Donna. I'm, I'm actually going to read her bio because it just it was just put together so succinctly that I wanted to read it. But Donna's going to actually tell you all about her. Um, first of all, like, share, do what you need to do there for the podcast. But what we've got today is all about understanding spiritual intelligence. Now, the podcast um, title is How to Grow Spiritual Intelligence. But the first thing I want to get an understanding of is what actually is spiritual intelligence. But that's for, for Donna. Now, Donna is the founder of Vibrant Living International, a nonprofit organization. She is also a life mastery coach, an ordained minister, podcaster, and author. So she's got her own podcaster. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. She helps bring accelerated transformation to people across the world. Her passion is to help to reach your help you to reach your full potential. She spe- specializes in helping you turn your baggage into luggage so you can live a life of dreams using and developing your spiritual intelligence. Now she's been doing this for over 25 years. Um, the podcast is you were designed for greatness. Now I'm going to repeat that again later on during the um, interview. Because uh, it's so succinct with what we're doing here, so you'll you'll enjoy that one too. But first of all, welcome Donna. Well, oops, hang on, I've got to press the right button so I get you up here. Welcome, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure, Susan, to be here. Thank you. And um, just before we came on, I was just saying um, to Donna that, like here in, oh, I'm in Queensland. And it's melting at the moment. It's so hot. And it's not that dry heat. It's that really muggy, muggy heat. So um, mm-hmm. you try to put makeup on, it just sort of all sweats off and everything else. <laughs> and I've, I've got on to Donna and she said, have a look outside my window. And it's just covered in snow. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the middle of somewhat of a blizzard snowstorm. So, yes, it's way different. <laughs> Yeah, and we're in a heat wave. So, yeah, that's the world for you. But now well, let's get stuck into it, Donna. Um, first of all, I want to know a little bit more about you. Like how did you become an ordained minister? What What's taken you on your life path? And then we'll get stuck into the um, the story behind it. Well, anytime someone is a coach, the saying goes that if you are a coach, you most likely have overcome something yourself, which is my story. And so where I am, where I started was in a blended family and I became a teenage mom at the age of 15 um, and I raised my little girl. And so, you know, that makes me sound, it sounds so easy. It was anything but easy during those times. It was very, very difficult and there isn't enough adjectives to describe how hard that was, but it I was always the girl, if somebody asked me what I wanted to do is I just wanted to help people. And I ended up always being the person that people would be talking to and go, I can't believe I'm telling you this. I've never told anyone this. And I would be helping them through different things in their life. So that's been a part of my life as I grew, got married, had other kids. Now I have grandkids. And so overcoming adversity and developing who you really are so that you can have a life you dreamed is one of my main passions. Yeah, I, I totally understand that because people used to say to me, what do you want to do when you grow up? And, I, and all I could think of was I just wanted to help people. Um, and that it, was, it didn't sort of make sense, but it, made, it was so, so clear. 
Yes. You, you knew where you were going, but you didn't know where you were going. Exactly. <laughs> you, you knew what it was involved, but you didn't know how you were going to get there. Yeah. Um, even, you know, later on in life, it was like, I just I just want to help people. Why can't I just do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so you had a baby at 15. Wow, that is challenging. And I know back in the olden days, as I call them, Mm-hmm. You know, it would that was so tough. Like women didn't in Australia, women didn't get in. Oh no, it, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't okay in society. No, no. no. So yes, yeah, so that is a big challenge. That's a huge challenge. So okay, so you went through that. Then you, then you've eventually you've met someone else and you've had enough more children and all the rest. Mm-hmm. What still took you? further into like the life mastery and the ordained minister why did you go through that were, were you always a church goer or is this a different type of church no uh faith was always part of what um got me through adversity it's it was definitely god was part of my life and i um was always involved in church in some capacity but the uh what got me here today is i my kids are grown and I took a job thinking that it was going to be my dream job. It wasn't. A short period of time management changed and I was let go. But you know, when you put all your eggs in the basket and you're like, ah, this was it. And it wasn't it. Mm-hmm. So I did a bunch of soul searching of what, what is it that I really want to do? They were going back about 10 years ago. And Vibrant Living was born out of that finding myself on the floor with the wind knocked out of me kind of a feeling. So there's been coaching and mentoring and discipleship all throughout my life. But I finally said yes to myself and yes to really what I love. And that's how Vibrant Living was born. Oh, that's, yeah, that sounds about right too. And sometimes we do need to have the wind knocked out of us before we can stop and and have a look because, excuse me, sometimes we're just going on and on and on and on and until somebody stops that or something stops that or some um, force stops that, you just keep on going. Um, And when that stops, then it gives you that time to breathe and and look around and and see where you need to go. Oh, that's that. So that's really cool. And and Vibrant Living is, oh, that's so that Vibrant Living is an international and not-for-profit organisation. Yep. Okay, cool. So that started what? 10 years ago, did you say, or about 10? It's, it's um, that I went through the transition about 10 years ago, but it started in 2016. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so we, we understand your background. You've obviously got it all there. We, we don't need to um, prove that anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> what I'd love to get an understanding of now is what do you call spiritual intelligence? It is an interesting subject that I have been exploring for quite a few years and trying to understand the premise of it is, is we are a spirit living in a body, having a human experience. If you, for example, if you, for some reason, lost a limb or a hand, you still live. You didn't lose who you were. And so a lot of times we have uh, accelerated em- mental knowledge, mental intelligence, and we have done emotional intelligence has been so promoted, but no one really talks about what it means to develop my spiritual intelligence so that I can use the gifts and that God has given me, as well as using the laws that operate in the spirit to be able to, someone else might say universe, Um, but they operate and they're operating, but most of the time we're using them at our deficit. I use the example this way. It's like cutting and using a knife and cut it, doing it backwards and cutting ourselves. We have the tools. We're just not taught how to use them. And intuition is one of them. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so yeah, I love that uh, that that concept, the um, spiritual intelligence, because it's it's funny. The majority of my guests that I've had on, that's exactly what we've talked about, but I haven't used it in that sort of context. And and why I love having these guests on is because we 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 may, might be all talking about the same thing, but we talk about it in a different way, and that can resonate with different people. And that's what's what 
is so brilliant about it. Um, there's no one way is the best way. There's so many different ways that we need to take on and get an understanding of these different ways so we can grow and in, in the way that suits us. So, okay, so we, we're doing spiritual intelligence. I guess what I need to know is can we narrow it down even more like what does it feel like or what does it what does it um appear like what do, what is it like a, yeah what is it <laughs> <laughs> well it's hard to define what it looks like any more than looking at the wind you can't see the wind but you can see the results of the wind and that is the difference when we're be learning how to utilize and use the gifts that we have been given, as well as working with the laws, which is what I, I coach through and teach through, is you see the results of that any more than you can see my spirit. It's learning how to see what the results are. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, sort of, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, when we, we, we you're talking about the laws now, I don't want to go into all your um, IP, you know, all your uh, intelligence and and your side of things. Is there a couple of laws that you can sort of just give us an example of, so people can see what it's about when you're doing their coaching? Oh, yeah. but before we go, hang on, Donna's website. I've got it going down on the little ticker at the bottom, but I haven't told the podcasters. So it is ivibrantliving.com so we have to have the little i in front you know like the iphone but ivibrantliving.com is donna's website um so sorry <laughs> you can you the, the the lords may be just brushing on those laws or just touching on them so they've got an understanding of what you're talking about as far as laws go well i thought i'd start with a couple of the gifts that oh, okay, we cool. talked about and so being intuition and everyone's heard of intuition but you know that not everybody pays attention and really utilizes it the way that i describe intuition is you and i, I at least i believe you were were pre-internet <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and so we had computers that had floppy disk that we had to install stuff onto our computer with these disks because there was no internet. And our computer was only good enough for the capacity, whatever programs we installed on it. Now the internet, once they we were able to plug into the internet and connect, we had a vast amount of different information that we never tapped into before, where we never grew up saying, Google it. <laughs> but it is a common thing everyone says today. So using our intuition properly is the computer hooked to the internet. There are unlimited answers and resources available to us when we truly learn how to use our intuition in a deep way. Instead of saying, I could never ask, how could I? It's questions simple like that. It begins to expand the connection that we have to the spirit because all the resources are there. Imagination is another one of my favorite. Imagination is using our, we use it really well for the negative, but what kind of life would you love and what does it look like? And begin to really imagine the life you would love and asking questions with your intuition to get there. Using the laws and, and these gifts that I teach about spiritual intelligence is a little bit of a, I kind of get it, but I'm not sure I get it. And I understand that. And I'm not going to be able to fully explain it in the time that we have together. One of the ways that um, we often get led around by our circumstances, we react to our circumstance. Um, instead of actually creating the life I would love. I, ha I tell a little story that I heard someone else tell. Now it's become mine kind of a story. Is a man went into a bank to cash a check. And he went up to the teller and he said, I want you to cash this check. And she said, well, I need you to endorse it. He's like, I don't want to endorse it. If I endorse it, you may take it and not give me my money. 
She's like, sir, I can't give you your money unless you endorse it. He's like, I'm not doing that. I'll just go to another bank. Well, he went to three other banks. When he got to the fourth bank, he was telling through the same di dialogue with the teller. And she picked up something and hit him upside the head and said, sign the check and I'll give you your money. So he finally did. And she gave him his money. For whatever reason, he went back to bank number one. He said, I got my money. And she said, did you sign the check? He said, yes. And she said, why did you sign it for her and not for me? And he said, well, she explained it to me a little different. That's what life does to us sometimes. It has to hit us upside the head before we really begin to get it, that it doesn't always work the way we want it to. It only works the way that the spirit has designed it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Ah, okay. Um, so was that, was that a law or that, that was a story? That was a story. That was a story. Cool. Um, all right. So you, when you say um, ask your intuition, that is the first thing I tell people. That's that's what it's all about. You got to ask. If you don't ask, you're not gonna you're not gonna be open enough to receive the answer. So you've got to ask to be open. Um, it's like just opening opening yourself up a little bit more. And imagination. I love that because I I talk about the imagination side of it too. So they're part of our gifts that we've got. Mm -hmm. um, but but some of the, the and and I and I know a lot of the other gifts and there's there's a lot of um things out there, but I guess why I've just sort of touched on the laws is because they don't talk about I mean they talk about the law of attraction, um mm -hmm. and some people sort of put the law down as uh, as a negative connotation mm -hmm. and I think when you said that there's a few laws why I've sort of, I've said that is because well the law of attraction isn't really positive or negative it's just a law isn't it. Because exactly. if you're putting out negative stuff, you're going to get negative stuff back. Absolutely. And people say that with karma. You know, they sort of go, oh, karma will get you. And I'm thinking, hang on, karma is not positive or negative. It's the same sort of thing. And it's basically the law of attraction. Whatever you're putting out there, you're going to get back. Um, but, yeah, just can, can we just brush over a couple of those other laws? Because no one's talked about them in all the guests I've had. Yes, I have. There are 11 of them that I teach on. Whoa. Um, and so, and the law of attraction is only one of them. Yeah. Um, but the basis to everything in the spirit is what you put out, you'll get back. That's fundamental. And, um, what we, uh, one of the, one of my clients recently used the analogy of is if you're not liking what, what the world, you know, what your life is showing right now then look in the mirror because you're, the way that you're thinking, which is one of the laws, the way that we're thinking is has a lot to do with the world that we're living in or the life that we have. So the law of thinking, um, I base it on the scripture as a man thinks in his heart. So is he, there's a lot of phrases that, that mm -hmm. a lot of different quotes that say that, but however you think you truly are. I, I tell a story of, two kids that were put in um, two different rooms, one little boy and one little girl, and they were in a room full of poop. And it, it was an experiment. And the little boy sat down and began to cry. My life is full of, you get the picture. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's my life. The little girl knocks on the door and says, can I get a shovel? They go, why do you want a shovel? She says, because there's this much manure. There's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> And that's it. They're in the same situation, but they're looking at it completely different. Their perspective, what they expect, what they're imagining, what the whole thing is completely different. And people can find themselves in the same situation around the way that they're thinking. And so that's one of the laws. And it's pertained to, I dig into it a lot deeper, but yeah. how are you thinking? Because of the way that you're thinking it is returned to you. You attract negative or positive, to put it in the simplest terms. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. It certainly does. And the thing is with that too, um, when you're doing the, the the coaching and stuff like that, you can actually then take them back onto things that have happened to them mm -hmm. and reframe that or change that around, you know, because they might, might have, may have thought it was a whole pile of 
you know what, mm -hmm. but it is actually you could look at it in a different way. And, and the same context has happened with me when when um, my stuff happened too. In, in my younger years, I could go back, okay, it took 20 years to do this, but <laughs> yes. eventually go back and go, oh, right, okay, I can look at this in a different way. Like with my situation, I, I refused to talk to anyone about it. That was it. There was no way I was talking about this negative stuff until I could use it to help somebody else in, in one way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, and so that's why now I, I do the podcast because I don't mind talking about it because I feel it can help. Um, but, yes, it's just reframing it. It's just looking at it in a different way. And it, that's what's really, really important. But uh, before I go any further, I just want to acknowledge that um, Donna does have a podcast too. And it is called, hang on, where is it? You Were Designed for Greatness, um, which I mentioned earlier on. You Were Designed for Greatness. Now, you, you'll really enjoy that. There's, there's, I actually popped onto Donna's website and had a bit of a look. And some of the um, the stories you've got in there or some of the the, uh, the guests you've had on it sound really amazing. It looks really good. Yeah, so, so jump on and have a listen to that, guys. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Do you do enjoy do you enjoy doing the podcast? Because I love I, doing it. I love meeting people and talking with people all around the world. I mean, what other way would we be you be where you are in Queensland and I am in the US and you know, worlds apart, hours and hours apart, and being able to touch each other's lives. So I yeah. I think it's amazing. And and it's not only us connecting and touching it, but but the other people that are listening too. Absolutely. It's just and when you go back, when you said before, we were there before internet and everything else, you, you, I could not even possibly have imagined that we would be doing something like this all those years ago. Absolutely not. How, how can we help people? We're doing it just by talking. And it's, it's really, really amazing. It is amazing every yeah. day. But um, anyway, so that's a podcast. Sorry, I, I went off on a different tangent. Um, now, I want to get back into how we can grow this spiritual intelligence. So we've got um, the understanding that we've got these gifts there. What we need to do then is um, enhance those gifts is, is my, my thought behind it. Enhance those gifts to create a, a better spiritual intelligence and not only enhance those gifts but be open to look at other gifts as well. Yes. Would I would that be sort of where we're looking or going? The first is exactly what you said is be building an awareness that it's even the case. So many times, I mean, have you ever felt like life was just happening to you? I know I have. It's like the, you know, it's like I just, you know, whatever happens to me, I just have to figure out how to deal with it. And rather mm -hmm. than realizing that life is happening with me, not to me. And that's something to write down almost and repeat. Life is happening with me, not to me. And when I begin to learn, understand that I can work in harmony and create a life I love and learn about all the different laws and how they actually work, it is incredible. It opens up. It's like I've been in the dark and I didn't know it because it was mm. just all that I knew. And now I begin to see things I never saw before. And it things like click and make sense when you begin to under, understand how they work. Let me share another law with you. Okay. Uh, one of the other ones is called the law of supply. And these, of course, are um, abbreviated of what is involved in this. But the law of supply is around... When you have a dream or a desire, you didn't place it in you. You didn't create yourself. You don't even cause yourself to breathe. Their desires are part of us when we were created. That's why some people like to make cars and some people want dancers and some people like our art. All different kinds of desires and abilities that are in us. And so learning that when we work with our desires, that there is an answer, there is a resource that is available in the spirit to answer every single problem. There is no lack. And learning how to work in harmony with the way I'm thinking, what I'm imagining, my intuition, and begin to realize that there is no lack. 
The way that I describe it is if you walk to the ocean or to a large body of water and you took out a teaspoon of water, would the water in that ocean diminish? Of course not. So now I'm gonna take a bucket and I take a bucket of water. Did the water diminish? No. Now I'm gonna get a truck, ones that hold liquid, and I'm gonna fill up the whole truck. Did the ocean diminish? Absolutely not. So what I like to say is I scoop from abundance and abundance remains. What size of scoop do you want? Do you want the mm. teaspoon or do you want the truck or whatever? It's like how much there is no lack and learning how to adjust the way I think using my imagination, my intuition and begin to tap in to the resources that are available. That's a little taste. What do you think? Oh, I like it. I like how you're thinking too. And and the um the stories behind it, it, it just really does make sense. It it is really, really cool. But can you just repeat that affirmation again? Because that I really like that. Because you're talking about abundance for you, but abundance for all. For all. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the other thing is we have this a lot of people anyway. I had feel like if I have something, that means you're going to have less. Mm. And that's not the case. So the phrase that I say is I scoop from abundance and abundance remains. The oh, water no. doesn't diminish. The supply is there in the spirit. And for every desire you have, there is an answer to because you weren't given the desire without the supply being there. We just have to get it from the spirit into my hands. Yes, yes. From one, think it and then receive it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I love that. That is beautiful. I scoop from abundance and abundance remains. Absolutely. Or, yeah. Oh, that is really nice. And it, I, I think when we can fr frame it like that, especially with people that are more empathic and, and they, they don't want to and it's not being greedy it's it's they just yeah they have that little bit of fear that if they have it then somebody else is missing out um if we can do it in that sort of terminology then it's a win-win across the board and that's that's perfect my own is returned to me is one of the phrases that i say and only my own that's under another law it's like so whatever i am thinking and believing and imagining is what is returned to me so it isn't that the other person is in lack unless they're thinking is if is in all the other gifts are in that harmony. So learning that there is no lack other than between my ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And if we if we, we tap tapping into that imagination, as you said, there is nothing lacking there. Yeah. Okay. That's really cool. I love that. All right. So we, we're talking about um See, we've gone on to the laws. We've talked about what spiritual intelligence is and how to grow it. Um, is there another way, because we've got a little bit more time left, and I do want to also say, actually, I'll pop this up on the screen. Um, Donna's got some free books as well. One of them, the new one out late, it just recently, is called An Umbrella on a Sunny Day. Now, it's a free uh, e-book that you can download. But check out her website, because which is ivibrantliving.com, because there is a couple of other bits and pieces that are free there, I've just noticed. Like there's this quiz, mm -hmm. which I love playing with quizzes. I think they're fun. And you've got this um, right down the bottom when I scroll right down, we have got a free workshop, Turning Your Baggage into Luggage. Tell me a little bit more about that one. Turn Your Baggage Into Luggage is a workshop to help women rise above, it is predominantly women right now, to rise above the pain and disappointment of life and begin to create the life you would love. You know, I had baggage from telling the little tiny picture of my story. And so my passion is, is to help women to look at their baggage different. If you would picture the image of big trash bags filled with stuff that you've hidden, that you don't want to talk about with anybody. And we're going to get you free from carrying that around and repack it in a pretty luggage bag. And so we can take a trip in some place that you would like to go. So the workshop is uh, free and online. 
and it is um, available and it gives you keys to be able to learn, to begin to do that. Um, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, ah, cool. So that's on the website, ivibrantliving.com. Um, and I should put myself back up there, sorry. Um, <laughs> that's Yeah, that's really good. And so there's, there's heaps on there. You can make appointments and everything on, on the website. Um, so jump on and have a look at that. But what I want to say about that um, turn your baggage into luggage, that is when we were talking about before, when you start to go back on some of the things that have happened in your life and how you're going to start to reframe them and, and create a, a, a different perspective on them. And that's what you're saying about the baggage. When, when you look at garbage bags compared to luggage to, to travel overseas with or holiday with, they're so completely different and yet they can hold the same memories and the same, uh, yeah, the same things that are, that are going on. And and I guess that that's what's happened with me with my, the stuff that I did. And, and like I said, it took 20 years for me to reframe it all and be able to talk about it in a manner that I wanted to be able to talk about it, that, that empowered me rather than uh, put me back into the situation that I had experienced. And that's one of the things when we, when we do it by ourselves it does seem to take a really long time. It took me a while to work through mine, but this particular pro, this particular workshop will get you started and bring, and then I have programs that you could also check out later on. If that's something that, if this is a need that you have in your life, my, my turning your baggage into luggage coaching program is only six months and you will see miraculous accelerated transformation. It doesn't have to take years. Let's have a great 2022. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in in our days when we were going through them, and I suppose that's, that's part of it, isn't it? We had to go through and we didn't have the internet. We didn't have the ability to get no. through it quickly. We had to go through step by step and get a complete understanding of it each time and go through the pain, go through the challenges, go through the experiences, which enables us to be coaches like that, which enables us to be able to help others right. because we've been there, done that. We haven't got it from the books. I mean, I have done life coaching studies and I'm assuring you've done coaching uh, studies mm -hmm. and everything else too. So we've, we've got the um, the learnings from them, but we've had the experience. So it, it just takes that a whole step further, isn't it? And Absolutely. when people say, I, I struggle with meditation, I, yeah, so did I. I get that. Absolutely <laughs> get that. Um, and sometimes with the internet, the, 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 the positives are you've got all the information. The negatives are you've got so much information. Absolutely. What do you follow? And then you see everybody else think, oh, they've got their life together. Well, I can assure you, no one's got their life together because the only ones that have have passed away. That's the whole reason why <laughs> the whole reason why we were here is to learn and to have those experiences and keep going and keep going and share them. I, I feel to share them now. So um, anyway, that's really gone off tangent. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> oh, you're making me go right over, over there then. Um, all right. So we've looked at um, how to grow our spiritual intelligence. The first thing we need to do is um, be mindful of our gifts that we've got. And some of the gifts are developing your intuition. Some of them is imagination. Some of them are helping out here. The law of thinking. Law, oh, okay. Yes. And then but the laws, I guess, not we're going back into them let's look at the gifts first what other gifts have we got uh some of the other gifts i call your will it yes is, it and it is the ability to hold the picture of what you would love to the exclusion of all other outside circumstances yeah so that's uh, like focusing on your, your goal isn't it so that focus is a gift Yes. And it's, it's different between there's a different, I mean, cause there's two kinds, you know, we could say we've got a flashlight or I've got a laser completely different results on how you're actually focusing and what the results are. So that is another one. Yeah. Okay, cool. I haven't looked at focus as a gift and yes, it is. It certainly is. I mean, even when you're doing meditation, you some, one of the uh, meditations is to focus on the flame. The, the flickering flame. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that is a focus, isn't it? 
Um, so we looked at the gifts. Now we've, then we've got the laws and you can get more of the laws if you do the coaching course with you and, and get a deeper understanding of it. But some of the basic laws is the law of attraction, um, which is which is basically an, almost an overarching law, isn't it? And then you've got this, the other ones in. And there's 11 laws, you said. My mm -hmm. goodness, I thought there was enough in the world with COVID. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the law of gravity. They're working. We just don't know about them all. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And so, you know, it isn't that there are a law that is, you know, because I agree with you, we don't need any more laws in the world. Um, <laughs> but it is uh, the way things operate in the spirit might be another way to say it. It's it's the way things operate. You If you fall out of a tree, you're going to get hurt. And the law of gravity works. Even if you say, I can fly, it's going to work. And these yeah. are these are the same way they work no matter whether you realize that there's gravity or not they're still operational and so if you want to learn more about it you could simply schedule a call with me and i could talk to you more and see if this is a good fit for you oh cool yes i sorry i forgot to mention that there is a um a little contact one and you can get a, a little free consultation introductory Absolutely. consultation too so if you need to if you need to um or not need to if you would like to it's probably more more to it if you'd like to um chat with donna that's where you can do that so um so we've had the gifts we've had the law and then just to grow them and to develop them and get an understanding of them is just to be open-minded about it and and gather the information from where where it suits you and, and, and how it suits you. And again, I, I guess in our days or because we didn't have the internet, I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of book reading. And I know that in the books I would take out elements of them because that resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And then there was other parts that I've gone, hmm, yeah. You know, I, I had a guest on and she was talking about ghosts and there was a lot of that she was talking about spiritual levels and there was a lot of um the things that she was saying was, yep, yep, that resonates, that's cool. But there was a couple of others I went, mm, no, no, I, I'm not going to take that one on board. It doesn't <laughs> sit right with me. And it doesn't mean it was wrong. It just means it didn't sit right for me. And mm -hmm. that's why we have all these opportunities is because there's plenty out there that will resonate with you. Um, so that's what I really like. But we are getting low on time, Donna. So any last um, information, any last things you want to bring forward about spiritual um, intelligence? I just want to encourage you that you can turn your baggage into luggage and actually create a life by design, not by default. And I would love to support you in any way I can. Please visit my website and take advantage of all of the free information because my heart is to help and that's what i'm all about yes and again to the ivibrantliving.com is a not-for-profit organization and i think yeah. that's why with this podcast i have been quite happy and open to be putting all that forward because it is a not-for-profit um uh, whereas there's you know a lot of the other guests are well i'm I shouldn't say it's not for profit because a lot of the other guests that like me, they're working. We, I, I work part time. I work and, mm -hmm. and do this for free. I do this because I love it. Um, uh, but it doesn't mean I don't deserve to to receive money for it either, which I don't get, but I do deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> Let's just make that clear, okay? <laughs> I don't get it, but I do deserve it. And that's the main thing. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Donna. My pleasure. On the show. It was really, really lovely. And, and um, yeah, like, guys, like I said, ivibrantliving.com. Jump on there if you want to talk to Donna. Um, stay online because we have a chat when we're finished and I will do the closing. Thank you. Wow, that was cool. I've got to turn up all the little the little banners and everything else. So that was, that was really cool. It's so nice to have an understanding of it in a different context and um, see – like spiritual intelligence in, in, in that way. And, and I love that, the, the word to it, spiritual intelligence. It's just, it's just so cool. It doesn't mean you have to be smart and clever over everything. It's like you find what suits you, go with that. You know, intuition suits me. I go with that because I really like it. Um, and that's what I do. I like doing the flower readings. I like that side, side of it. But my, my biggest passion is... We do have two bodies. We have a physical and we have a spiritual, just like Donna said. There's the two bodies. And I know that. I know that because I've experienced it. 
I've experienced it a few times. One, once was a near-death experience. One, one was during a, a very, very violent pack rape. Um, I left my body and watched it happening. So we do have two bodies. I can guarantee that. Um, but anyway, that's enough about me. Like, share uh, and um, subscribe to the podcast and we will catch you all next week. Okay, guys, bye for now. Have a great week. <laughs>